Hello, Tony, what's up? Todd Williams is making new friends. A duck walk. To head up. All right, who's next? Good job, son. Coaching for a go. week here at Mike Allstott's football camp, Todd job, Williams son. knows what he's doing. He's an offensive tackle for Florida State. Dead height. That's good. You've been learning. Go. Watching him with the children, it seems impossible that this achiever was once homeless and headed down a path of crime. Todd says the trouble started when his grandmother died. He was only 14. When she died, like my life spiraled down here. He credits Tyrone Keys, CEO of All Sports, and a former professional football player with helping to turn his life around. He's an incredible guy. Todd says the belief that he could find a better life, a different life, was critical to his salvation. God did a work in my heart. He changed, he changed my heart and the way I look at life. I didn't want to be like the rest of my family end up in prison. Today, he volunteers his time at Leslie Peter's halfway house, working with other young men where he once found refuge. I want to help kids. I want to come up with my own halfway house. I have a story to tell. What I have to say is going to help somebody out. I think Todd's story has awakened the consciousness of people young and old. Growing up in the projects of Bradenton, Florida, Todd Williams never had much to begin with. And when his grandmother died and less than a week later his father was murdered, Todd Williams was left with nothing. He was 14. My mom had her own stuff going on. I know now she was like in and out of trouble. And so foster care people came and were like, uh, we're going to give you a week to try to come up with some people who could take care of you. We're going to come and get you. And I was young, like, man, I'm not going to foster care. And so he ran. I just went to a friend. We stole a car and just went to Miami. Anywhere I laid my head, that's where I live. Whether it be in a broken door of a hotel behind a dumpster or in a car that I stole or whatever. I didn't, I didn't care. Start doing all sorts of stuff. Committing crimes, robbing people, beating people up, breaking and burglarizing people's houses, going into restaurants, saying we're gonna order food, eat the food, snatch tips and run. And you never understood that that was wrong? I'm not gonna sit here and say I didn't understand it was wrong, I just didn't care. But at that point, I just felt that, uh, I felt like the world owed me something, and through all this, I was going to get back, and this is my way of letting it, letting it all out. And um, I knew it was wrong. I was just so bitter, and I just, I didn't care. I just felt like the world had let me down, because I, I was on rock bottom. Wish I was too dead to care if indeed I cared at all. Williams spent months in and out of juvenile detention centers. I have no grasp of hope. There was no light at the end of the tunnel. But there was perhaps an unwitting glimmer on New Year's night in 1994. On his way to an apartment, he stopped to watch the Florida State-Nebraska Orange Bowl. I caught a glimpse on TV, and I was like, man, I wonder what it would be like to play in front of all those people. Then a couple guys chuckled, like, hey, you don't even have a place to live much less play football and for cotton. You wouldn't even know how to act around them kind of people. Hey, come on, don't even dream like that. One time in Juve, um, one of the coaches, one of the, the, the dudes that the advisors, whatever, he was a coach at a high school. So I was like, man, I bet you if I got out of here, I could play some high school football. So he looked at me like, man, they're not looking for criminals. They're looking for players. But Williams began to think that perhaps he could be a player. Now 16, he had grown to six foot three. I got to the point where, man, I'm tired of checking in the probation officers, going to court in shackles, begging people, mom, to come sign me out of juvenile line, saying that they're my parents. So when I get out, I'm right back by myself from day one again. I want to do something. Eventually, he was sent to a halfway house in Tampa. And that's what's going to be his last opportunity to really get himself together before going on to the big house. There 
that quickly. Hey, hey, hey. How you doing? How you doing? Good, how you doing? So, 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 we're... Some of the things I learned in this program, had I not been here, I probably wouldn't have made it where I'm at now. Because in this program, uh, I don't know if they still do it, but we used to go to, we used to, go to school and stuff like that. And um, not being like in regular high school, they transferred the school work you do here to high school. So when I got out and I decided I wanted to do something, the work that I did here, the stuff I learned here, it carried over. A lot of the stuff I did here was actually a little bit more advanced than some of these uh, high school, so it, it helped me a whole lot. So had I not been here learning some of the things from Mr. Keys or some of the other guys, I, I don't know where I would be. But I thank God that uh, I was able to come here and learn some things. It's a vicious cycle. If you give, if you give up your hopes and dreams just to hang out with a bunch of guys that are doing the same thing, selling drugs, robbing, doing all kind of stuff, dropping out of high school. And you follow, I mean, when you get old, you're gonna wish you had, and you don't really feel like giving up. But I mean, some of y'all have that, that kind of potential. Why give that up? They still gonna be there. I mean, they don't wanna do nothing anyway. Where are they now? They don't write y'all letters, tell y'all how much they care, send y'all anything, care nothing about y'all, man. Think about that while you're here. Those same streets, they're going to be there. You don't stand on the corner, somebody else will. Everybody not, not going to be leaders right off. You could grow into a leader, but some of the things you need to learn before you become a leader, you got to be a great follower. You don't have to follow somebody worth following. I mean, if you got guys running around here doing knucklehead stuff, and when you go home, man, is that really worth following? Follow some good people, some people that care, some people that's going somewhere. Follow them. You know what I mean? Mimic them. Listen to them. Somebody that's going somewhere. You know what I mean? Like you say, you got a problem with following, but if you follow some good people, is that really a problem? It's who you follow, that's the problem.